Welcome to the Advisory Science Channel. Living Things and Their Habitats Did you know that all living things go through certain stages in their lifetime, like birth, growth, reproduction and death? In this unit, we'll cover the life cycle of mammals, amphibians, insects and birds. We'll then look at sexual and asexual reproduction. Let's start with the mammalian life cycle. Mammals are animals that use their lungs for breathing air even underwater. They are vertebrates that are covered in hair or fur. The life cycle of a mammal follows the four stages of the life cycle of all living things, birth, growth, reproduction and death. The time before a mammal is born is called the gestation period or pregnancy. Animals with a bigger mass and larger size have longer gestation periods than smaller animals. Nearly all mammals give birth to live young. Other types of animals usually lay eggs. There are a few exceptions though. Marsupials are mammals such as kangaroos. They give birth to live young that are still in the very early stages of development. A baby marsupial is called a joey. A few mammals lay eggs rather than give birth to live young. An example of an egg-laying mammal is an echidna or a duck-billed platypus. After birth, female mammals use their mammary glands to produce milk and feed their young. But paternal care may come from one parent or both. Young mammals must learn how to eventually hunt or feed themselves and escape dangers such as predators. So some mammals have longer life expectancies than others. Humans are the land mammals with the highest life expectancy, but there are underwater mammals that live much longer. Weasels, on the other hand, have the shortest lifespan of any mammal, only living between one and two years. So now we've learned about the life cycles of mammals and how they all go through the same four stages, birth, growth, reproduction, and death. Next, let's move on to the amphibian life cycle. Did you know that frogs, axolotls and newts are all amphibians? These animals are cold-blooded, which means they change their body temperature according to their surroundings. And did you know that they spend their adult life on land, but are born and develop in water? Let's take a closer look at the life cycle of a frog as an example. In March, you might see clusters of frog spawn floating on the surface of a pond. There are groups of soft eggs that have been laid by the mother, protected by a jelly coating. The mother can lay up to 30,000 eggs, but not all of them survive, due to predators such as insects, fish and other animals. Within a few days or weeks, the eggs develop into a tadpole with a head and tail. The tadpole has gills to breathe and is dark in colour to hide from predators. It grows quickly. Next, the tadpole grows front and back legs and the tail shrinks away. Now, it uses lungs to breathe and lives on land. However, it's in danger of being eaten by snakes, lizards and birds. But adult frogs are not completely defenceless. They're camouflaged to blend in with their surroundings. They jump quickly to avoid danger and they have good eyesight. Their sticky tongues help them catch insects and slugs. All these differences are what we call metamorphosis, a Greek word that means transformation or change in shape. That's it for amphibians, but there's another kind of animal that looks very different at various stages of its life cycle too. Let's move on to the insect life cycle. Have you ever seen a butterfly emerge from its cocoon? Do you know what happens inside? Keep watching to find out and learn all about the fascinating world of insect life cycles. Entomologists are scientists that study insects. Insects make up about 80% of all kinds of animals on the planet. They have a protective outer coating called an exoskeleton that they must shed so that they can grow. And this is called molting. The insect hatches from an egg and turns into a larva, which looks a bit like a worm. At this stage, their main job is to feed. 
the larva turns into a pupa and by now it's grown to adult size. This part of metamorphosis takes place inside a case called a cocoon. Next, the pupa turns into an adult insect and emerges from the cocoon. Most insects now have wings and three body sections called a head, thorax and abdomen. Some insects, like grasshoppers and cockroaches, only have three stages to their life cycle. Let's move on now to the other flying animals. You guessed it, the bird life cycle. Let's try and address the age-old question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? What are some features of birds? Well, they have feathers that help keep them warm. Most can fly. And instead of a mouth and teeth, they have a beak to catch prey. The life cycle of a bird begins with, well, an egg. The egg is incubated, usually by one or both parents, to keep it warm until it's ready to hatch. When a chick hatches, it's covered in soft, fluffy feathers called down. A young bird is fed and protected by its parents until it's strong enough to fly. It's kept in a nest to protect it from predators. As the chick grows, it learns to fly and begins to explore its surroundings. Once it's fully grown, it becomes an adult bird, finds a mate and starts the whole cycle again. So, which came first? Well, actually, the answer is both. The life cycle of a bird starts with an egg, but it also starts with an adult bird laying that egg. Now we're going to move on to sexual reproduction. The animals so far have been different. But why is there variation among living things? Variation is caused by sexual reproduction. This is when two parents make a new individual. Their offspring, scientific name for children, will have a mixture of features from both parents. This mixture of characteristics creates variation and helps some individuals adapt better to changing environments. Let's look at sexual reproduction in more detail. When animals reach maturity, eggs are released from the female's ovaries and sperm are released from the male testes. The joining of an egg and sperm is called fertilization, and it can happen inside the female's body or outside, in the case of certain amphibians and fish. Different animals have developed certain behaviours to increase their chances of reproducing. For example, male peacocks show off their tail feathers to attract females, and female praying mantises release chemicals to attract a mate. Plants also carry out sexual reproduction. The pollen from the male part of a flower travels to the female part and fertilises the eggs, resulting in seeds. There's also another type of reproduction called asexual reproduction. So do you always need two parents to reproduce? It may surprise you to know that some animals can reproduce on their own through the process of asexual reproduction. This means they produce identical offspring without the need for a mate. Female animals like bees and ants can release eggs that develop into offspring without being fertilised by a sperm. And did you know, a Komodo dragon at Chester Zoo in the UK laid eggs without ever being in contact with a male. Asexual reproduction allows plants and animals to reproduce quickly without having to spend time finding a mate. There is, however, a disadvantage. All the offspring are identical, with no variation. So, if the environment changes for the worst, no individuals are better adapted to survive, and this could lead to potential extinction. Therefore, plants and animals that can choose to reproduce either asexually or sexually when they need to, are more likely to successfully produce offspring. So there you have it, the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. And now you know all about different animal life cycles and how we get the variety of plants and animals on Earth. Thanks for watching. For more science resources, visit our website, advisoryscience.com, and check out the blog for even more educational content. Don't forget to subscribe 
and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes.